Hello everybody. Okay, I'm ready. Welcome, Welcome to, to Myths. I'm Matt Hoss. And I'm Dan Rhodes. Whether you know about Theseus or you're revising your syllabus. If you want tales with a bit of jest or you just want to hear about incest. What? What? It's really interesting. Welcome to Myths. Welcome to Myths. Hello and welcome to episode 63 of Smiths! 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 <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> but, I, what I don't like is at the start of a podcast, you're like, here's a thing which I'm not sure. <laughs> I'll throw my everything into a thing I'm not sure it will work. It's usually a noise. <laughs> it's always a noise. Because <laughs> I can't be able to think of anything to say, so I'll just make a generic note. So, what's the what's Smith's about? <laughs> what's, um, uh, right, what's the podcast Smith's about? Let's do mine. We uh, rank all the people called Smith. Yes, uh, and uh, number one is the band of Smiths. Yeah, and we also rank all the Smith songs. And mm. what's your favourite kind of Smith as well? Like uh, you know, there's blacksmith, uh, goldsmith, uh, woodsmith. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> What's that? Oh, no. <laughs> that Sorry, I'll just do you. <laughs> I'll just do you. <laughs> what's my favourite kind of Smith? Uh, probably, probably a blacksmith. Wow, pretty generic, huh? I don't know, what's my favourite Smith? The Goldsmith. My cousins are called the Smiths. But I think I prefer Goldsmith. <laughs> <laughs> I just um I got a friend who's a silversmith. That's, that's pretty cool. Yeah. That's pretty cool actually. She makes yeah. Really cool jewellery. Uh uh can't remember the website. Or else I would have plugged it, but uh well we'll think about that afterwards. But damn, we're gonna be doing something a little bit silly today, aren't we? We are. I've got it in my hand, Matt, please describe what I have in my hand. Uh it's your penis. Oh, I told I you knew to you was gonna make a penis <laughs> joke. No, it's my other hand. <laughs> Your second pair. <laughs> like an earwig. Oh, here's a weird story. Uh, I don't know why I'm telling you this, and I've already lost faith in it. <laughs> <laughs> so, when my brother went to university... Uh, before my brother if this story's shit, I'll just make a noise again, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like... Um, yeah, like a sensor beat, like... <laughs> okay, go on. When Before my brother went to university, he was quite a shy boy, and he didn't... It was quite a, a, and we live in North Yorkshire, and there wasn't really much opportunity to kind of be raucous or whatever. If you no, know no, what no. So he went to university. Because you get up at four a.m., go to the mine, go back at eight a.m. p.m. Uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. And uh, no one else is going to shag sheep. So, uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, so my, my brother went to university and kind of had like a awakening, quite a raucous awakening. So he kind of partied, uh, uh, and he used to get naked quite a lot in his uh, halls of residence, quite a lot. And I'm not sure why, but. Yeah, he's he's kind of like, he got naked at gigs and stuff like that, and he was quite a, a not rebellious person, but like would leave loads of pots and pans in people's rooms and fill them with water and stuff like that, you know. So we'd do a lot of pranks. And stuff One like of that. those, yeah. Yeah, but for whatever reason, and my brother's quite um, uh, a free spirit with his genitals. <laughs> okay, I've heard stories. <laughs> What's the, yeah, uh, too many. Uh, but, uh, but he, um, for... But he got a new laptop for uh, his um, for his uh, for his university, right? To like because uh, we can't, didn't couldn't really afford a laptop. But my mum bought him a laptop for university to go away with. Uh, he's the first kid in our whole family to go to uni. So they were uh, like, "Don't mess this up for the rest of us." But uh, the, the first thing he did, it, it, there's like special camera functions on the laptop. If you know what I mean, like a webcam function, and. <laughs> He just took a picture of his knob, not to send it to anyone, just for himself. And he did like a mirror effect, so he kind of created like he had looks like he had two dicks. <laughs> <laughs> but then his flatmates came around one day, and they're just looking through his files, just nothing uh, innocent. And then they just came along this double dick picture. <laughs> and how do you explain that? It's like this is a picture of my two matches. <laughs> Why did he take a picture of his? I two? don't know. <laughs> Like, but yeah, he, but he wasn't embarrassed by it. He was just like, "Yep, they call me Double Dick." <laughs> so yeah, so uh, uh, it, hey, if you join the Misfits fan club, we'll post that picture on there. Yeah, <laughs> I want Alex to email us with that picture. Please don't. <laughs> I don't want to see it. And the thing is, uh, yeah, he was just—he was pretty. 
Yeah, you used to. Anyway, so what's the thing we're doing? Like, <laughs> anyway, as I said about five hours ago, <laughs> what is the thing I have in my hand, Matt? You've got a uh, Collins Gem English Dictionary. English That's Dictionary, small Matt. Small little dictionary. We're though. going to play a game, Matt. We're playing a game. Well, you, you are the podcast listener. I'm going to... You're, I'm going to flick a page. You're going to tell me when to stop. Yeah. I'm thinking that there are four columns to this dictionary and X amount of words down each column. I'm going to ask for you to stop. I'll pick a page. So, um, I'll then ask you for one to four. That will determine which column it's in. And then one to whatever, 20, will determine what number. Whatever word is in the dictionary, you must have to... You have to seamlessly... I'll do it, then you do it. Put into a conversation at some point in this podcast. Yeah. A bit like the Queen bit from the other week, but without... But, but yeah, like, without, like, being a bad radio. And you have to spot when they've done it. Okay, yeah, and you have to, like, slip it in. Uh, that We get points for being seamless as well. For the seamless. Uh, yeah. How many times can you put it in without me noticing? Uh, well, I, I do that, but that's off it. Off it. Okay. Uh, yeah. But, uh... Um, okay. So, um, what's the prize if I win? Traffic wager on it. You, you win my affection as a human being. No, I already have that. I'll tell you what I'll do if you win. I will... Man, that's way too big a challenge. No, what was that? I was going to say I'll complete the league table by next week. No. <laughs> you doing work on the podcast? <laughs> yeah, but um, you have to edit the next podcast. <laughs> oh, the listeners would not want that. <laughs> just for you making... Ah! No, it's just pride on the line, Matt. It's just a bit of fun. Okay, okay. So uh, you go first. Okay. Uh, I'm going to say stop. Oh, it's still... One, two, three, four. One to four columns. Why do you have to count them? You know it's four oh, yeah, columns. Yeah, sorry. Uh, one. One. First column. Okay, let me quickly uh, count how many words there are in this column. Oh, there's one that I really want you to do. <laughs> oh, God. One to 14. I'm going to guess. I'm going to go number one. Thank you. <laughs> what what <laughs> <laughs> right, we'll keep reading out the word you're trying to pick. No, I'm going <laughs> to... Oh, this is comedy gold. I'm going <laughs> to... If it's Ethiopia, I'm going to shit myself. No, I'm going <laughs> to... I'm going to show him out what it is. Oh, this is comedy gold. Oh, can you read me the... Uh, should, I, should I read the description first? Or, uh, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> you just have to know what it is. Are you ready? Are you, are you aware of what words you just picked? Uh, tell me oh, this is comedy gold. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to us the word is clarus. I can't sneak that in, can I? I can't sneak in a clitoris. <laughs> a small... I need to learn what it is. Yeah. Know what it is. <laughs> yeah. A small uh, sexual sensitive organ at the front of the vulva. Clitoris. Oh, vulva? that was comedy gold. <laughs> so, uh, so that me... was comedy gold. Um, me... Matt has to try and sneak <laughs> in the word. <laughs> the word clitoris. For the first time, I have to find the clitoris. I have to seek out the clitoris. <laughs> well, we're not doing this every episode. Yeah. Um, wow. Um, so... Uh, yeah, so this is, uh, this is interesting. Okay, so, now me, my turn. Oh, well, I, oh, that was comedy gold. I could have had uh, so many of us. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you could have had really boring ones, like clog. clog. All of the clone, all of them would have been quite difficult to be fair. Okay. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh, fuck you, that's such a, like, that's not an easy word, you know what I mean? That's, that's, I mean it's going to be funny. I think you get the, but or, it, it is going to be, or an. <laughs> it's going to be really funny when you... <laughs> Just say it. All right. So <laughs> say when. <laughs> Clitoris. When. All right. All right. And I'm going to go like, for column three, please. <laughs> okay. Quickly count how many there are and then what. All right. There's some uh, abbreviations here. So should I dismiss them? Yeah. Uh, one, two, four, five, six, seven. There's seven. Seven. Um, I gotta say, we've obviously got quite big descriptions then because seven's not a lot on a column. Six. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's not, it's not as rude as clitoris, but a I, hard word. I thought clitoris is gonna be hard. <laughs> Do we, would you like me to read it out? You have to guess what it we means. We know the description, yeah. Adjective. Using four independent channels to reproduce or reca- record sound. And, a little clue, it's also the name of a Who album. Uh, what, what, do we read the description again? Uh, using four independent channels to reproduce or record sound. Using four independent channels to reproduce or record sound. <laughs> Obviously, we talk about this in myths all the time. Yeah, what the hell is that word? <laughs> the word is... 
quadraphonic. <laughs> <laughs> wow, this couldn't have gone south. Yeah. <laughs> it's meant to be just a light-hearted game where we had to sneak in words from a dictionary and we've got clitoris and quadraphonic. <laughs> <laughs> quadraphonic clitoris sounds like a good band name, right? It's a good band name. Well, good luck. <laughs> we can't be subtle, can we? And I know, we're gonna be, today is the final episode of um, The Odyssey, and it's going to be quite an intense one, and I don't think there'll be much time for clitoris or quadrophenia, you know what I mean? <laughs> uh, but yeah, what so... What's the phonic? That is funny. Let's give it well, a go. Yeah. Oh, Jesus Christ, yeah. <laughs> well, we, we could, uh, I was so happy you got the cue, I was like, oh, that is very, very... Oh, <laughs> clitoris is going to be banter. Uh, well, you know, it's uh, the only time we uh, we don't really discuss clit wrists. That's, that's weird conversation talk. Anyway, um, <laughs> if only my brother did a double clit wrist pick, you know, instead mm. of a double dick pick. Anyway, uh, shall we crack on with the myth, then? Yes, I'm ready. And we, uh, here we go, for the final time, part 12 of the Odyssey. It's finished, all here, the end. Welcome to the Odyssey, where we meet a man stranded at sea. Searching for home with varying success. Why didn't he just book a National Express? So this is the final one. Uh, uh, it's been an emotional ride. Are you ready for it, Dan? I am ready. It's sad, isn't it? It feels like, God, oh, probably about 12 weeks ago we started this. Yeah, well, what, what great maths we have in this podcast. Yeah. Uh, uh, so, on yeah, so... Um, to kind of cut a long story short, Odysseus arrived back on his island, suitors are taken over the palace, and today is the day he gets retribution. He's locked them all in the courtyard. Yeah, he's just won the, uh, the, the axe challenge. Battle. The yeah, arrow so, through the axe battle. So he has streamed up his old bow, which is like an old... Coincidence bow. that there were 12 axes and there's 12 weeks? I don't know. What? 12 axes and 12 episodes. Coincidence? Oh, I thought you said... I tw- think not. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, fair enough. I thought you, when you said 12 weeks, I thought you meant, like... There's 12 weeks in a year. I was like, what? What's that, what's that compare? <laughs> yeah. uh, just, uh, I'm not switched on today. But yeah, uh, so yeah, for every episode, of tw- yeah, but that's, we've had purpose behind us all. We haven't just ri- riffed it, you know? No, you not know? at all. No, 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 not at all. No, 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 no. But, um, and so he's been planning for the last couple of episodes how to get rid of the suitors, and these men are evil men, and uh, today, so he, he shoots the, um, the bow and gets it through all the axe handles, so he has a bow, they're locked inside. And the, uh, the suitors have just been wowed by the beggars. They're like, prowess. wow, this beggar's really good at yeah. bow and arrow. Because they still think it's a beggar. Yeah. So, should we just get straight into it? Yeah. Uh, and i got to say, this is one of my favourite whole... This is my favourite story of the Odyssey. Odysseus bounds from his chair and scatters his arrows on the floor beneath himself. He then lets another... Right. Just for context, by the way, just because he's in a chair. Remember, he was in a chair when he fired his arrow through the axes. Yes. Yeah. And then they've all turned around to be like, what? So that's literally, we've literally ended it just as he, the last episode finished. Started it as the last episode finished. Odysseus bounds from his chair uh, and scatters his arrows on the floor beneath himself. He then lets another arrow fly straight into the throat of Antinous. And Antinous. Oh, he's gone straight for the leader. <laughs> yeah, and so, like, again, this guy who's the most evil one, he gets taken out straight away. And, and also, it's visceral, like, it's Blood pulsating everywhere. It hits him in the jugular, and it's like oh, oh. he's like, Hell. Oh. Yeah. yeah, it's ridiculous. Uh, the suitors are dumbfounded by this, uh, and they believe Odysseus shot the man by accident and threatened to kill him for his carelessness. Because they think he's a beggar. Yeah, and they say, "Oh, he just accidentally shot the arrow by accident, and you've killed our leader." But no, it was a good oh. shot. It is at this moment that Odysseus reveals his clitoris. I mean, his identity. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it is at this moment that Odysseus reveals his identity to them at last, and the men are deeply uh, afraid of his wrath. So he goes, I am Odysseus, it's been my house you've been sanctified, and today I take it back. And then they go, and arrows go all over the place. Shit going down, and they're locked in. So what happens? They don't have any weapons, right? They have no, because they locked the armory as well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what is that? So only Telemachus and Odysseus have weapons. Uh, I think it's the, a couple of both, and I think Eumaeus and Phil, uh, Flight just might have access to weapons. Okay. But, We'll double check in a second. Eurymachus tells Odysseus that the men will make uh, uh, restitution for their evil deeds, but the vengeful man will not be satisfied. Because they're kind of cow out of it at this point. But Odysseus, no, no. I kind of like that because Odysseus is like, I'm going to go to Brown Town. <laughs> and that's not the right phrase. Uh, yeah, <laughs> he's going to anally rape them. <laughs> 
Uh, <laughs> Eurymachus uh, then tried to lead the men in a charge to break past Odysseus to the door behind them, but the archers cut him down swiftly. Amphimenus charges against Odysseus, attempting to overbear him, but Telemachus casts his spear at the man with deadly accuracy. Then, obtain, obtaining his father's approval, Telemachus runs to the chamber containing the hidden weapons and draws out helmets, shields, and spears for his companions and himself to use. So he is. Because he he's. And I also forget that Telemachus has, like, what, five or six, um, like, quite hardcore mercenary fugitives who are on his side that he met when he was travelling, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I think um, not that many people know uh, are helping him. But, like, uh, he's got a few friends. Yeah, uh, yeah. So they're, they're helping him, yeah. you know. Uh, but he's uh, he, he in their past episodes he's been hiding all these things like behind yeah. these statues and stuff like that. So he gets them all out for this occasion. He returns to Odysseus and he and the two herdsmen, um, the swineherd and the cowherd, quickly don the arms. Odysseus, in the meantime, propels his shaft uh, with speed and vigor, killing a man with every arrow that leaves his bow. That's like that's pretty intense. Yeah. So and by the way. In in the Odyssey, in the book, well, in the poem itself, it's visceral. There's blood everywhere. There are people flying over tables. It's a carnage, if you know what I mean. When he has no arrows remaining, he dons the equipment that Telemachus has retrieved for him. The suitor, Aegilus, tries to muster uh, to the other suitors. To, um, tries to muster the other suitors together. Melanthius, the evil goat herd, assists them by slipping away from the room through a bent in the wall. He finds the equipment hidden by Telemachus and brings back 12 sets of arms and armour. Which, again, a sloppy job by Telemachus. Yeah. The suitors quickly don these, but Telemachus spots Melanthius leaving the room to find more equipment. Odysseus sends the two herdsmen out to intercept Melanthius and to, to, and to hold him captive. So it's herdsmen on herdsmen. Yeah. The battle we, we've been waiting for. I, mean, I don't care about Odysseus, but it's herdsmen on herdsmen. You know. Goats versus cows and swine. Yeah. Yeah, are you more of a quite, uh, cow herd or a swine herd? Probably, I do like pigs actually, probably swine herd. And I'm a cow herd. Actually, no. Your family would be farmers though, so kind of. Yeah, actually, I'm thinking more of a lamb herd. I like, I'll look, I'll, I'll like to look after some sheep. Okay, nice. I'd be a good shepherd, wouldn't I? It would, yeah. If I grew a beard, I'd be like, I'd be like a parable. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> How, what, what do you think I look like as a beard? Because I can't really grow a beard. No, I think you'd look weird with a beard. Do you reckon I look like a college professor? Yeah, I think you'd look much older. I think I'd look weird with a beard. My head's too small for a beard. Yeah, yeah, because you, you, your face would be very long then. You'd look yeah. like a dark wizard, if you I know would, what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. You, you would look like you have some evil sapphires. And... What? Would, would I be sexy with a beard? Probably, yeah. Yeah. Do you you can't get any more sexy, can you, Matt? <laughs> that actually sounds like a compliment, so I'll take it. Can't get any more sexy, but can't get any less sexy. Uh, so what happens... After this. Eumaeus and Philitus obey their master. They ambush and subdue the goat herd on his way out of the weapons chamber. They tie his arms and legs behind him and hoist him up to the roof for us for, for painful safekeeping. So they're kind of torturing him. Yeah, yeah. But he's a bit of a bell end, so it's all right. Yeah. That's, that's, that's the Jack Bauer rule. They record his screams on a quadraphonic. <laughs> no, shut up! <laughs> the herdsmen then rejoin Odysseus and Telemachus. <laughs> Athena appears in the likeness of Mentor to stand on the side of Odysseus. She's come up now. She's been in the chamber with sleeping Penelope. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, because they've been touching quite recently. How do you say it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Agilus? Uh, ageless. Ageless threatens to slay Mentor's family if he does not abandon Odysseus to his fate. Athena then rebukes Odysseus for fearing to attack the armed suitors despite their numbers. For he fought more vehemently on the plains of Troy than he does in his own home. She then changes her form to that of a swallow and flies up to the hall's rafters, unnoticed by the suit. It, unnoticed? Yeah. No one's noticed that a grown man has just become a swallow and flown away. Yeah. Well, in all fairness, They're busy. Like, everyone's been killed. And if you're, in, if, you're, if you're being shot at as well, loads of things are flying over. You've got to take a cover. And they're, they're, they're hiding behind tables and chairs and stuff like that. So basically, Odysseus is like, oh, man, I might have been off more than I can chew here. And she's like, get a grip, man. It's also, uh, yeah, I, but then again, I feel for Odysseus then, because like, you've been heckled during the battle. You haven't fought for like 10 years, bearing in mind. Well, barely fought for like 10 barely years. Barely fought, yeah. Uh, and, yeah. And so Louis has done a few energetic. He's certainly been keeping fit with all the stuff he's been doing. Yeah, but I think Athena's doing most of the, yeah. the handiwork here. So, uh, she, she kind of heckles him here. But, like, yeah, I don't know. Um, maybe it's unfair. 
Aegilus and the five suitors most adept at fighting lead the suitors in a charge. Athena causes their thrown spears to fly wildly from their marks. But Odysseus and his companions hurl their spears with lethal consequences for the suitors. The frightened suitors back away from the dead men, and Odysseus's party takes advantage of this to retrieve their spears from the fallen bodies. Six more spears thrown by the suitors miss their marks due to Athena's intervention, although Telemachus and Eurymaeus sustain minor injuries. Again, Odysseus's men throw their spears effectively, then use their second spears to engage the suitors in close melee. So now they're probably like, Yeah. Because obviously, cause not they're, not in a, they're not in a martial arts movie, but... I didn't mean for that to sound like yeah, they were. Yeah, it did, it did uh, get a bit like that. But, but So they're trying to keep all these guys at bay, but since the numbers of them, they're trying to like, just... Um, they got to fight them at close quarters. I guess it's like in the film 300. Oh, well, are you are you doing another uh, reference? Oh, yeah. Uh, Dan's reference core in the, uh, Yeah. When yeah. they go into the... When they're like Troy's the gate, and then they like... It's like, stabbing them, retreat. Stabbing them, retreat. Stabbing yeah. them, retreat. Because you've got to will, will down the numbers, because like, you're... Uh, yeah, again, like again, yeah, actually, that's actually quite an apt description. If you know what I mean, so they're trying to limit them. Yeah, the more they kill of them, and most of them are quite easy to kill. It's um, going to be quite a, uh, uh, you know, you've got to level out the numbers mm. a little bit. Athena throws the suitors into a blind panic, and soon the four allies slaughter most of the, all of them. <laughs> so they've killed quite a lot of them. Yeah, Leodes leaps before Odysseus and demands mercy before he did not partake in the suitors' sinful practices. Remember who Leodes is. Vaguely, he was in uh, last week's episode, and he was the first person to try and suit up uh, to try string up the bell. And he uh, had a prophecy. And, yeah, and he was he's like, a pro- "You all will die." Yeah, uh, and like, oh, bit of a, a buzzkill, mate. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, so he's kneeling before him. Like he's like, "Don't kill me! I didn't do anything." Yeah. However, because Leodes is a suitor who meant to win Odysseus's wife while the latter was still alive, Odysseus shows him no mercy. The warrior picks up a stray sword. And lops off the prophet's head. Now, this is interesting, because um, cause this guy, he wasn't a real suitor, but he was mingling with the suitor. He's like, hey, you're still, it's like a um, uh, diminished responsibility or whatever it's called. You know when like, you haven't murdered someone, but you were in the group that did, yeah, yeah. so therefore you've kind of, I don't know what that's called, I can't remember. Uh, I guess it's kind of like a, you're a bully if you don't report bullying, and they, uh, they kind of... Uh, you're, as good as, you're as good as the people that did it. Yeah, yeah. but like he... Um, so Odysseus has no mercy here whatsoever. My mum can email him with the correct term for that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> when you are in a group of people who murder someone, and you didn't actually murder them, but you were in the group that did, you were part of the friendship group that did, and you were there when it happened, that's called something. I think the colloquial phrase is pain in the clitoris. <laughs> pain in the clitoris, yeah. A quadraphonic. <laughs> can we call the four allies the quadraphonics? Yeah, yeah, sounds good. The quadraphonics, yeah. That, yeah, that's pretty cool, yeah. So um, Odysseus... Not, not a cool... Uh, so he's it, picked up a sword. He's like, hey, mate, you're one of them. Chopped off his head. Yeah. Femius the Bard also begs for mercy, claiming the suitors forced him to sing for them. Telemachus backs up his claim, adding that Medon, the faithful herald, should also be spared. Odysseus needs his, heeds his son and sends the two men out of the courtyard. So, so actually, he's let two people live. Yeah, but then again, these people were, like, bards. So, like, they're, like... It's like the entertainment staff, if you know what I mean. And... I mean, so I've done hard gigs like that before. <laughs> yeah, it's a tough gig when the whole room's been killed. You know, usually I'm killing it, but <laughs> Odysseus is this time. A little comedy joke for you there. Uh, so what happens afterwards? With the suitors dead, Odysseus summons Eurycleia and orders her to bring forth the maid servants who slept with the suitors. Now, uh, oh, before we get here, is he going to murder all the girls that slept with the suitors? Well, uh, do you remember any kind of particular uh, m- uh, stories about the maids? I remember them. Just kind of help. I don't really know. Because there's one maid. I can't remember her name. We're going to find her in a second. But uh, there's one of them who was really rude to Odysseus. She was slapping him and stuff like that, and demanding stuff. Uh, and they were cons- uh, her. Uh, she was hanging out with the suitors, not helping the master's household. If you know what I mean. Uh, so uh, yeah. So that's an important thing to bear in mind. These women assist the fighters in carrying the corpses into the courtyard and washing the blood from the palace. After the palace is washed down, the twelve disloyal maidservants are gathered into the centre of the courtyard and hung from a high column. Oh my god! <laughs> Again, Melan- all no- because they ba- they slept with some of the suitors. Yeah. Melanthius the goat herd is pulled down from his imprisonment and brutally mutilated. <laughs> oh Telemachus and the herdsmen then cleanse themselves after their unclean work. See now, this is interesting because though Odysseus is on the righteous side, 
He is brutal. He's going to like, be OTT. And Belantius, like, I think they cut him limb from limb as well. Like, they're, they're cutting, like, his legs and arms and ankles off and stuff like that. And they're really making, like, hor- like, like, torturous stuff, you know what I mean? Just because he was a massive bell end, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Odysseus next brings in br- Brimstone and Sulphur and uses them to sterilise the palace interior. Euryclea then summons the loyal headmaidens who greet Odysseus warmly and welcome him home. He's like, won! He's won! They're like, I didn't sleep with him, sir. So he's in the courtyard, it's covered in blood, he's yeah. cleaned it all, he's killed a lot of people, and he's won. And bear in mind that Penelope's still asleep during all this as Yeah, well. she's just asleep. But Euryclea wakes Penelope and tells uh, her about Odysseus' return and his victory over the suitors. Penelope, you know, for good reason, believes that she's wrong. Like, God must have killed the suitors and that uh, Odysseus is dead. She finally goes downstairs and observes Odysseus in silence and from a distance, unsure if it is really him. She wants to test him with secret signs. For example, where's my clitoris? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what contraphonic is? <laughs> uh, the only secret signs which only the two of them know about. And so she is understandably dubious about this. She's like, oh, if you're the real Odysseus, you know. It would be a shock, though, to wake up and find out that these guys who have been ransacking your house for ten years are suddenly dead now. Yeah. Like, like over, overnight. Oh, literally yeah. overnight as well. And, uh, yeah, it's like, it sounds like it's been, like, half an hour as well. Like, you enjoy your nap? Oh, yeah, everyone's gone now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but there have been so many dead... Like, imagine the amount of blood and dead people there. Like, 120 people just slain, if you know what I mean. Oh, well, probably a bit more with the handmaidens, but, like, there's loads of people just dead everywhere and bloody uh, um, so Odysseus he, he's asked to prove his himself you know what I mean because uh, you know, I, I, I understand Penelope's apprehension here because she she has been hurt before as well so she's she's believing it's too good to be true so Odysseus consents to her tests but first lays out a plan to deal with the aftermath of the aftermath of a massacre to make sure no one finds out about the murders they will pretend Penelope's wedding to one of the tutors is occurring in the palace to give them time to flee to the woods. Uh, what does that mean? They sent them a fake wedding. So he's like, shit, people are going to find out that we've just murdered all these people. Oh, I let's, see. let's say that the palace is closed because the wedding, a, a private wedding yeah, is taking okay, place yeah, yeah, between yeah. the suitors and it will give us time to... And people won't flight. leave. As well. yeah, they won't yeah. go, oh, I better skedaddle. Yeah. Um, So Telemachus and the others set up a fake wedding celebration. Penelope maintains her neutral and distant attitude towards Odysseus and and asks you require to make up his bed outside her bedchamber. Odysseus is angry! No one can make, move the bed he made out of an olive tree. <laughs> <laughs> That's a humble brag, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Oh, 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 you made me not sleep in my olive tree bread, which I spent, spent about like 12 years making. Yeah. Uh, what a weird thing to do, just buy it from Ikea. You know what I mean? Is it comfortable to sleep in an olive tree bed? <laughs> Probably. His intimate knowledge of the bed is proof that he is uh, truly Odysseus. And Penelope embraces him and asks forgiveness for her suspicion. Odysseus weeps and says, Hey, do you fancy some sexy time in the olive tree bed? And he goes, Oh, okay then. Oh, why don't you touch my mafoof area? <laughs> I goes, Yeah, what a lovely clitoris you have. <laughs> hey, what's that scar? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll stop saying clitoris now because I'm getting obsessed with I'm obsessed with clitoris. Um, so, uh, because he knows about the olive tree bed, uh, uh, Penelope knows it's him. No one else would know that because he's a fucking weirdo. <laughs> yeah. And no other myth has anyone mentioned, oh, I made it all a tree <laughs> red. That's, that's a psychopath behaviour, Odysseus. Yeah. <laughs> he just built a nest. <laughs> that's what he did. T- Odysseus, <laughs> I have two tests. What colour are my eyes? Uh, um, I don't know. <laughs> When's your birthday? I uh, uh, don't know. Right, I don't trust this guy. Get the bed moved outside. I don't want to sleep next to him. What the hell? It took me 12 months to build that olive tree bed. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's good to see you remember that. <laughs> okay, let's imagine you're Penelope. What test would you give to your partner? You know what I mean? Like, what, how would you test? Like, pretend I'm a long lost okay. uh, partner. Oh, nice to meet you, Dan. Uh, uh, I haven't seen you for a while. Oh, uh, oh, I am who I say I am. How would you test me? I would say, Matt, when was the first time? What room were we in when we first met? Oh, I. Th- uh, 
I technically think we met in the, at the University of Keynes hallway because I you I think I first met you. Well, actually, no, I probably met you in a, 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 a K- E Lions. Maybe I don't know. Was that correct? I think so. Like doing the uh, doing uh, what play? E Lions uh, is uh, at the University of Kent in Little Room. Uh, it is at the importance being earnest and where. Uh, I played Dr. Chaucerball, and uh, a girl changed to the end of the importance of being honest to not kiss me at the end of it. <laughs> See, that's one question I would ask. But other people wouldn't know what room I was in. Um, I, but I remember meeting you properly uh, in the hallway, because you were stood with John Maltz, a, a close mutual friend of ours, because uh, uh, you just in an audition with him, and you two sound like you did really well, and I was a bit nervous and jealous of both of you. So, <laughs> oh, oh, these two are cool. You're not cool. <laughs> not cool. Did you get the part though? Yeah, did get... I was in it as well. Uh, of course. <laughs> Sorry, I, was like, I sound like I wasn't in it myself. <laughs> I, that's why I, I create imposter syndrome for myself. Like, I uh, never went to... No, that's my go. What though. question would you ask me if you, uh, you wanted to find out whether I was an imposter or not? Oh, that's a good one. How about... What is the last documentary we watched together? Uh, the last documentary we watched together was Innocent Man. Yeah, and who is my favourite character's name? Rusty Featherstone. Yeah, or Odell Titsworth. I would, oh, yeah, I would have said. any of the above. Um, I guess, okay. Uh, when's the first time we kissed? 2014, I guess. Yep. When Miss Prism didn't want to kiss you. Enough. <laughs> in the importance of being honest, and they wrote in that Algernon did. <laughs> It didn't write in, we grew it in. <laughs> it's, just, it's happening on stage anyway. Yeah. Um, uh, no, t- uh, actually, the correct answer is today. We're going to do a live on their kiss today. Actually, <laughs> no, it's getting weird now. Can I do a, a raspberry in your belly again? No, I'm still traumatised by anyway, that. Sorry, we got carried away. Uh, um, so <laughs> she knows he's Odysseus. Mm-hmm. He's like, oh my goodness, finally my husband returns. <laughs> Same picture as King Midas. Yeah, they're brother and sister, aren't they? Um, so, uh, however, uh, he has one more trial, though. However, that Tiresias, back in the Underworld, told him about. He must take an oar through the mainland and find men who do not know of the sea until one asks what the oar is. He then shall plant the oar there and make a sacrifice to Poseidon, return home and make sacrifices to all the gods. In bed, she tells him about the suitors, and he recounts his adventures. So, why does he need to? Um, why does he need to sacrifice to Poseidon? Because Poseidon's angry at him still. Really, in fact, the whole he he stopped his progression on the way home, and this is the time for him to uh, live in peace. He's, yeah. he's making amends, yeah. if you know what I mean. So he's got to walk so far to into Asia that someone's like got no idea what they li- to a peoples that live so far away from any water or sea that they're just like, what the hell is that? <clears throat> I, to be honest, I can't remember that, and that sounds pretty weird. But the thing is, that Ithaca's an island. So he's going to have to sail, ironically. <laughs> but, like, I don't, I don't think he has to, but, like, unless it, he finds a really stupid person, like, I don't know what this is. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I, mean, I assume he's leaving Ithaca to go to, like, the mainland of the continent, and then go, like, surely he doesn't have to just go, Ithaca's not a big place, so surely everyone knows the water. Like, yeah, that's what I mean, it's an island, so you can be surrounded by it, you know what I mean? Uh, I'm an idiot. <laughs> what does the machine use? <laughs> it's a fucking all, mate, we're on the beach right now. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, um, in the morning, Odysseus tells Penelope he must f- visit his father, Laertes. He is afraid that his word would spread about yesterday's event, so he instructs her to take uh, her maids to the upper floor and not to have any contact with the outside. He leaves with Telemachus and his herdsmen, hidden with Athena's help. So, the final book. Dan, take it away. Hermes leads the suitors, who squill like bats into Hades where they encounter the ghosts of Achilles and Agamemnon so we're now in the underworld the suitors are now in the underworld just very briefly because the gods we've seen the gods for the final time and they're kind of like a, a yeah. lean these all these suitors are like their Go souls are coming yeah going to hell the suitor Amphimendon expl- explains their fate to Agamemnon who invidiously compares his deceitful murderous wife Clytemestra to the faithful steadfast of Penelope it's a bit of a downer, I can imagine, isn't it? Yeah. Meanwhile, Odysseus and his troops reach Laertes' dwelling. On his own, Odysseus finds his frail elderly father tending to his vineyard. Odysseus comes up with a false identity and introduces himself, noting that he last saw Odysseus five years ago. Laertes' grief forces Odysseus to reveal himself, proving his identity <laughs> via his scar 
and knowledge of the vineyard's trees. Do you recognise me, Dad? No. Let's see that scar on your leg. <laughs> Let's see your penis scar. Then embrace and join the others inside to eat, including the old servant, Dolius, father of the treacherous Melantho and Melanthius. Odysseus tells his father about his victory over the suitors. So, like, this is actually a really powerful moment because his dad, like, he didn't, his son, uh, he did, believed not to see his son ever again and he's, he's there and he has a genuine emotional reconciliation and uh, it's, it's a beautiful moment actually. Like, uh, and he's, he's making amends and everything's been sorted out and all the things that Odysseus has wanted, he has back now in his possession. Back in town, the goddess Rumour bandies about word of the suitor's defeat. The townspeople take away the bodies and bury them, then convene. Half of them, led by Euripides, yeah. father of Antinous, want vengeance for the death of their sons, while others realise that a god was on Odysseus' side and argue that their inhibited sons deserved their fate. <laughs> okay, so that's an interesting debate, because Euripides is like, you murdered our sons, you have done this unwillfully. But the rest of the dads are like, nah, yeah, I to probably had to hurt my sons probably... yeah. Because <laughs> that's a weird position today. You know, your son's just dying. Nah. Like, yeah. Actually, he went. Ah. <laughs> Euripides leaves the former camp to Laertes' house, but Athena, disguised as mentor, incites the artist to hurl his spear at Euripides. Odysseus and his comrades begin killing the others, but Athena stops them and declares a truce between the warring parties. And so ends the Odyssey. <laughs> wow. Uh, so yeah, there's peace in Ithaca, finally. Uh, uh, Odysseus and Penelope are happy. Telemachus is still a little bit of a bitch, but you know, um, it's a happy ending, broadly. Well, not for the 120 people dead, but broadly a happy ending. And uh, let's go and mark us out of 10. For, for you. Hey there, my name's Matt Huss, and in this link I have an American accent, and I advocate the safe use of missed podcasts. In small doses. So, Dan, what do you think of the whole Odyssey? We did it, finally. I enjoyed it, Matt. Um, I enjoyed it because there were things what happened in it that I enjoyed. And was it worth the wait of the last, like, eight episodes? I'm glad that it ended on, like, an injury. It wasn't boring. Like, there was violence. There was stuff that happened. Yeah, but as I mean, it's been a slow build. If you right. I definitely enjoyed the first half of the Odyssey where he's actually on his adventure. The fantasy the stuff. The fantasy yeah, stuff yeah, yeah, with yeah. all the monsters and the gods. And him, his journey to Ithaca. But I think we see Odysseus in a different light here because he has to be kind of secret and... Uh, I'm proud of him. He's got a home. Yeah, and he's actually one of the people, the few Greek heroes who kind of deserves his... He, he's not a bad guy and yeah. I think broadly he's a, a, a good leader. Uh, so I think that he's one of these people that's not massive dick about it. If you know yeah. I mean. But but that's being said, he did do some quite unruly things in this and I think there's a lot to talk about. So uh, let's mark out 40 on 4... Uh, categories there's life skills creativity morals and WTF and what's let's mark life skills out of 10 the practical things practical things are how to kill people a lot of people how to get armour from a well, store um, but actually let's, let's elaborate uh, not just to kill people but to ambush and tactically plan how to kill people both uh, from a range but also shorthand mm-hmm. and also how to deal with people how to um, overcome an overwhelming when the odds are against you yeah how to, you know, keep your head in battle, uh, even when uh, God heckles you. Yeah. How to torture someone. How to torture someone. How to hang people. Yeah. How to uh, make amends for your father. Yeah. How to throw spears and shoot arrows and stab people. Uh, how to... Tie someone up. Uh, how to make an old tree bed. How to turn into a swallow. Yeah. Yes, yeah. How to... Secretly, though. Secret. How to make people's spears go the wrong way. Yeah. Um, how to make up with your wife. Yeah, how to plan an or how to not know what an or is. <laughs> um, and how to sacrifice the gods. Like that. That the gods. Uh, and, you know, how to... Go to the other world. How to deal with an angry mob. <laughs> I think it's pretty high, dude. <laughs> and the things we have on them are pretty intense. I'm going to say... Sh- should we do a one, two, three? Yeah. Three, two... Yeah. One, nine. Uh, whoa, you were going nine. Yeah. It's going to go eight, but I, I, don't, think, I don't know why, to be honest. I think, I think nine's helped. It, it could even be a ten. It was very creative. There was a lot that happened, actually. But was it as much as something like Day of the I think it seems like a nine because of how boring the last few have been. But yeah. actually, I don't think it's any more... I think yeah, that's I think why it's I quite think bloody. It's, uh, it's bloody. There's lots of different... Uh, it's both 
brutal, but also there's other sides to it as well. There's the reconciliation part of it as well. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And this will also account for creativity as well. So you have the brutality, but also the reconciliation. I think that's that accounts for both life skills and creativity. Yeah. And so I'm going to say nine. Okay. Happy with that? Yep. Yeah. So, morals. The, the ethical things we have. The ethical things we learned. Um, don't trust someone's identity just because they say who they are. You have yeah. to like, uh, test them first. Test them, yeah. Uh, wash. No, that's the last skill. Uh, I was gonna say how to wash down a palace. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, what do we learn morally? How to reconcile with the father? Yeah. How to reconcile with the gods? Yes, I think that's, how that's a just, major one. Even if you don't feel like, even if you feel it's unjust that they hated you to begin with, sometimes you've just got to cut your ties and say, "Look, I'm gonna apologize for something I didn't really do." Yeah, and also to do with that, we also see the guy, the fans at the end being like, you murdered our son, but they are quite pious men and go, actually, uh, we've learned to... Our son's uh, a dick, yeah. Well, it'd be like, we understand that the gods are more, you know, we, we trust that their, their decision was because maybe they were a blight and light. And I think it's yeah. taking um, reconsideration. Oh, yeah, yeah, taking the high road. Um, uh, I think, it, so there's romance in morals, there's also the... The lack of mercy as well, but also mercy in some people, but not not for a lot of people. Because it actually spares some people, but not a lot of people. Huh? Yeah. Uh, but then again, like, I think that's the hard thing of a leader. Um, so I don't know. I don't think it's cray, but maybe more than average. Maybe. maybe yeah. Maybe a five or six. Six. I think a six. Yeah. Uh, creativity. Again, we've kind of talked about it a lot, but we see gods. We see if go gods in the battle. We see a massive battle, like a bloody a big battle. battle, gruesome, like bloody the again. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I was gonna say it's like the lapis, but I think it, it's structured the foot way better. Yeah. You know what I mean? And this has been building up for a while as well, so it's all kind of splashed out at the same time. Um, no, creativity is really good. I was really visualizing it more than some of the other myths we've done. I really visualized what was going on. And he reveals his identity as well, and that's a quite a powerful statement. So he goes, "I'm Odysseus. This is your time." And it, uh, and he's using the bow which uh, Penelope like gave him as well. So it's it's all tightly wrapped up in yeah, the story. I really as well. like it. And he gets his father, and uh, uh, yeah, he, he he's in terms, there's battle, there's gods, there's uh, romance and creative. Uh, I think it's also pretty high. Any anything, anything else to add? I think no. I think it's good. Three, two, two, one, one eight. eight. Nice. WTF? Pretty messed up. So much blood. So much blood. <laughs> we uh, had we had swords and everything going all over the shop. Uh, so there's uh, firstly the neck, uh, arrow in the neck. That's a good arrow thing. in the neck. And Before he's even revealed his identity. Also, you're taking out like, the worst suit straight away because usually you would build up to like killing the last guy, it's like the boss kind of thing. But they take him out straight away. Uh, um, but also. Um, Beyond that, uh, we also see Odysseus lose faith halfway through. Yeah. Athena heck on him, which we haven't seen that side of Athena before. No. Um, we have to find that mutilating and yeah. torturing. Yeah, that's a, that's. I think that's a key thing because bear in mind they're the good guys. They torture people yeah. and also hang, hang on the maids. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and they they also deceive people by pretending it's a wedding as well. Yeah, so yeah that, that's that's psychological up. kind of stuff yeah. going on there, and. Um, they also kill the gra- uh, the dads, uh, some of the dads as well. Like uh, then have the truce afterwards. Um, we also we uh, another messed up thing is trying to find someone who doesn't know what the sea is. That's yeah, messed up. That's true with that. When you live on an island, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're really stupid. Yeah. It's like uh, so. I think we have blood. We have again uh, quite grim. Um, it's pretty. It's not visceral. Visceral in terms of like it's not. It's carnage, it's brutal, but it's not, uh, for, not gratuitously so. Yes, yeah, yeah. So I'm going to say, I think, about a 7 or 8, I think. I would go 7. 7? Yeah. Not bad. So, uh, let's, uh, let's add it up. So we have uh, 9, 6, 8, 7. Uh, Is that 30? I don't think it's 30. Damn, we have a high scoring one eventually. Yay! Finally. Good job, Matt. We've done the Odyssey. Finally. After 12 parts. And listen, thank you so much for uh, enduring uh, 12 episodes as well of, of the Odyssey. And we love doing this as well. I've, it's been good, hasn't it? It has been good. I yeah. learned a lot about the. Well, the Odyssey, I hope. <laughs> I learned a lot about clitorises. <laughs> yeah, definitely. 
Uh, and uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed it too. We want to do more of those epics. I know it's been a long series, but uh, hopefully you've enjoyed it as much as we have as well, because I think it's been quite a, uh, a fun... No, uh, I think it was really good. So uh, Now back onto normal myths. Uh, but we have Say goodbye to some characters for a bit. Yeah, I think uh, we're really getting to the end of uh, Greek and Roman myths. So um, I think it's a general plan. We're going to be doing some normal myths for a little while. Uh, but... We, we haven't got loads left. Pa- some palate cleansers. Palate cleansers. Uh, so if you want to get some suggestions into us, why don't you email us at misspodcast at gmail.com. Uh, we would love to hear from you regardless about anything. But if you have any suggestions, it would be key to hear them right now. Um, but also beyond that, we um, I think after that we'll probably move on to the Aeneid, which is the oh, Roman, uh, like a Roman uh, uh, like version of like a Roman... Odyssey, if you know. Roman me. Odyssey. And yeah. there'll be a lot of very familiar characters in that too, because yeah. we do tap into Roman stuff. Yeah. Uh, and it's a whole different kind of story. And it's like, and we'll, we'll get into that at the time, but if you enjoy the Odyssey, you'll definitely love the Aeneid as well. And it's uh, lesser known as well, so I think it's cool. Uh, but yeah, so we should probably uh, head off, Dan. Uh, uh, so, um, uh, uh, what else have we learned today? We learned what quadru- quadrophenic, uh, um, quadrophenic. Meant. We're actually recording on a quadrophenic clitoris <laughs> now. Yeah, clitoris right now. Um, uh, but yeah, so uh, if you want to get in touch with us, how would you do it? I would probably email us, as we said. But well, how, uh, if you're on social media, and you want to be cool. oh at Miss Podcast, Facebook, and Twitter. And how many stars would you give us on iTunes? <laughs> That's uh, Jim for seven. Uh, uh, five stars on iTunes. And if you want to give us a donation, either a one-off or give us a weekly donation, uh, patreon.com. You get to have some bonus content, which we haven't uploaded yet. But there is bonus content on the way. Uh, and uh, you can also get stuff from my shows. Uh, and, uh, if you, and also, if you want to see more Matt Hoss stuff, go into my website, www.matthosscomedy.com and see uh, all the previews I'm doing. And Because uh, I'm doing the Fringe this year, come up and see me. Woo! Or if you listen to this in the future... Uh, Don't come up and see me. I'll probably be dead. Uh, <laughs> I mean, yeah, do come up to Edinburgh any time, just to, at that precise time and location, but, like, during October. <laughs> um, but, yeah, uh, it'd be good to uh, have you there. And, uh, yeah, thank you so much for... Oh, uh, if you want to join in on the, the, the lols, come and join our Facebook group, The Misfits. Yeah. Uh, so, Dan, um, how should we, should we... Should we finish the podcast episode by... You got your laptop open. Should we just take a picture of our dicks and create some mirror images? Should, should we do uh, a double dick? I think that's the only thing we should really be doing. <laughs> Unzip! Zip, zip. Zip, zip, zip. Alright, well, thank you so much for listening. I've been Double Dick Matt Hoss. And I've been... The Quadraphonic. Quadraphonic Dan I will see you soon. Bye! Bye. Myths. Myths. I think in my head I'm pretty sure Odysseus re- essentially he reveals his identity before he shoots him okay. sorry before he does something to them uh, uh, so should I should, uh, what I'll do I'll say he's it. not going to mention it though he's going to it hasn't said it at the top and it should in my head I remember he's saying he gets straight into the battle I think do you know what I mean so no because look oh what a Fucking idiot. <laughs> oh, you're so close to doing what you did last time. <laughs> oh, every time, dude. Anyway, um, so.